Women today have life with no life within, and yet we're giving so much life to the people around us. It's called depletion. It is an injustice to women. So then we wake up where we hate ourselves, we hate our life, it's regret, it's resentment, and we need to get the root of it. And it's because women were not trained to design a life that fulfills them, but yet they are still giving. That's how beautiful we are. Yes. Giving yes. even though we're not receiving. Hey, 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 guys, it is Allison. I am the host of your show, Allison Answers Mission Awake. I cannot wait to sit down with you today and go over how we are going to crush the mediocrity in your life that has been plaguing our society since the beginning of time. I cannot wait to have a real deal conversation that includes intelligence, fun, excitement, and real actionable steps to make a real difference in the life that you're living now and making it into something you can be damn proud of and excited to live. Sit down, put on your damn seatbelt, and get ready for the ride of your life. How are you today? We are going to have a beautiful guest on today. Her name is January Donovan. I would like to, in a kind of sterile kind of way, I'm going to introduce her with a little biography. I want you to have a full understanding of who this woman is and what she is truly all about and how I'm just really honored to spend time with her. So I would like for you guys just sit back and I'm going to actually read you the biography and really get to give her all the accolades that she deserves. But the thing about January, I met her um, at an event and we just, I felt like we just became fast friends. She just resonated so much good love and energy and she's just a good soul. And she has a, a boatload of kids and a great husband and she's just a a force to be reckoned with, but a force of love. I'm going to just read about who she is. For the last 20 years, January has worked with thousands of women to help them realize their own worth through mindset and life skills training. She founded the art of being a woman, ABW, and it's a project. It's called the Art of Being a Woman Project. It's an online educational platform for both single women and mothers. Together with her husband, Ryan, who is an unbelievable, he's a great dude, I met him. She co-founded The Greatness Journey, which provides parents with tools they need to build their children's foundational beliefs. The goal is to equip children with skills to empower them to be resilient against negative influence. The vision is to usher their sons and daughters to their life's purpose so they can create impact in this world. January has also authored a self-image statement book for children titled, This Is Me, The Me I Choose to Be. Her work trains young minds to rise above their challenges and to choose their better self. It is the first of many in a series which is dedicated to empower children to design their self-image before the world dictates it to them. I love this about her. She is a motivational speaker, researcher, mother of six, and her husband's biggest fan. Her passion lies in ending the competition, comparison, and judgment culture has wounded so many women today with. She believes that women have not been adequately prepared to face the many different chapters of their lives, which is why women have compromised their divine worth, robbing them of peace and freedom. January's life mission is to teach women how to unpack their self-worth so they can receive the abundant life they fully deserve. And she is beginning her work with the youngest of minds, our children. One of the things that I experienced with uh, meeting January, I also heard her speak and just being right there in the front row and just seeing her sparkle and shine and knowing her off stage and experiencing her on stage was really, it was just magnetic because she was really honestly one of the best speakers because she's so defined and she's so clear and she has a real heart mission, which I think is what really helps people to change. I join her in the mission that we do not want to allow our culture to keep us, you know, what I say is like in mediocrity and not finding our true value. So 
I'm really looking forward to having her come in. She's, she, you know, she's waiting to come into our space today. What I'd like you to do is consider your own self-worth and consider the way that you view other human beings and the way that you see how people are developed on earth and how it's become distorted, how if you listen to January today, you will learn how to be more of you and be in your divine value. And that's the big thing. It's funny, I just did a video on that, that we are so, women are so easily ready to destroy one another and call people attention whores and all this nonsense. Don't we all want to be loved and valued and get attention? We end up distorting it because we don't know the, the kind of attention that we're worth. That's all that is. So I think we need to band together and understand that we need to find our own value and be able to say to others what their value is as well. So just hold on and here she comes. Hey, hey, hey guys, how are you today? It is Allison from Allison Answers and Logger Counseling Services. As you heard me say about January Donovan, January is a very, very, very special guest. And I always say that people are special, but this time I really mean it. No, and I mean it on all the other ones, but with January, I am I have this heart connection, and I really think you're going to experience it too. She is a woman who is dedicated and missional in helping women find their true fulfillment. And what I want everyone to hear who's listening, don't shut your ears, men. No, 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 no. Keep your ears wide open for several reasons. One, don't even tell me that you don't need fulfillment. And don't even tell me that you don't have a woman in your life that you would like to understand more. So this is not just for women. Okay, so here we go. January, I am so grateful to have you here. I think you are a tremendous force for good on earth. And I'm honored to know you. Likewise, I am so grateful. And I feel like the connection that we had was instant simply because of who you are, Allison. So I want to thank you for your genuineness and authenticity. And you really get to experience people's heart when you meet them, when they're real and they're true. So thank you for that. Thank I receive you. it as a gift. <laughs> yeah. And you know, just off camera, we were just discussing authenticity. And I definitely want to put that as something we're going to discuss because it's so powerful. But before we even get into that great stuff, could you share with the audience who you are, how you got to what you're doing and what your mission is? Yeah. So my name is January Donovan. I have been training women for more than 20 years, and it really started from my own unfulfilled self. And I was a good, you know, I, I felt like I had a great family. I was a good person, but parts of who I was, was hurting. I didn't like who I was. And so I sort of made bad choices simply because I was, parts of me were hurting. And uh, in my college years, I met a woman named Elena and she said, January, what kind of woman do you want to be? And I remember laughing, Allison. I'm like, I didn't really have a choice. And she said, let's design you. And so I met with her every single month for three and a half years. And she taught me mindset and skill set training to help me design every part of my life. The first thing I needed to design was my friendship. And she took me every part of my life. And I, looking back, I realized what a gift she has given me to help me see that every part of who I am matters. And that every part of who we are as women need to be accounted for, need to be actually um, fulfilled in order for us to actually feel alive and peaceful and joyful. And so I've spent really most of my life training women how to design every part of their life because I just believe that today women have no access to training. I mean, who teaches you how to find the right person? Who teaches you how to manage your mind at a young age? Who teaches you to know that your value is unconditional? I mean, these are things that are non-negotiable for a quality of our life. And so I've spent really 15 years teaching women for free. I didn't charge a dime. I trained because I believed in it. And then until it was Richard Branson who said, the fastest way to social change is to build a business. <laughs> and so I had to learn how to build a business because that was the way we were going to reach millions of women. So here I am. 
um, four years into uh, the woman's school, which is a mindset and skill set training to help women design a fulfilling life. And now we're in 40 countries and hundreds of coaches around the world. And um, yeah, I'll probably die doing this. I love what I get to do. So I love that. You know, I didn't even know the depth of, of you know, that you had people all um, all over the the of the country and the world. So could you explain how you would help someone, a woman design her life? Like what are the different areas that you work on? Great. So what I have, so according to Dr. Bar- Doris Bauman in the new research on fulfillment, that fulfillment is actually crucial for mental health. It's no longer optional. But we're not really talking what does it mean to be fulfilled, right? You know, there's a, a satisfaction in our life. So what we do in the school is we give women language for every part of their life because unfulfilled women can become toxic to their communities. Let me explain. Okay. So and if you look at the woman's school, we have a wheel, kind of a wheel. And the first part is your self-image, meaning the opinion that you hold of yourself. Because we have opinion that we hold of ourselves that we might have inherited from our parents from ex-boyfriends, from friendship, that might not be serving us. We need to design who we want to be. And it's constant, right? So that's one leg of this part of the wheel. And then our health, which is integrated. It's mental, emotional, physical, and spiritual. Our thoughts, as you know, impact our emotion. It releases a chemical reaction that changes our physiology and our spiritual receptivity. And it cannot be disintegrated. It really has to. That's why we put health as an integrated. So as a woman, we need to see our health as integrated. And then our friendship, meaning who is accompanying us and holding us accountable to who you were created to be. And then our intimacy, the most sacred part of who we are. How do we make sure that we are in a relationship that values us and that brings greater value in our life? And then our contribution, that extension of who we are, that we were created for, we're called to. Are we in a place that work that we love that makes us feel alive? Or even as a stay home mom, are you seeing the extension of your call in your home life and in your work life? And then our environment, which is external space made of people and things, is it toxic? Is it affecting our interior environment? And then our wealth, which is an abundance of our time, our treasure and our talent for the purpose of contribution. And then our family. And so what we do in the school is that we give women an assessment to say, if zero to 10, where are you in every part of your life? You know, because we're not, you know, we've been trained specifically as women to only see that what makes us valuable is perhaps our career, our body, what we look like, and maybe the house we drive or outfit, right? And so we have been literally neurologically conditioned to only see parts of who we are. And so we're not trained to look at with eyes of wholeness to say, wait a minute, I'm I'm stressed. Where is the stress coming from? Actually, it's coming from the fact that I don't actually like my toxic environment. It's impacting really my intimacy and it's making me really kind of not be the kind of mom that I want. We have to see with eyes of wholeness. So what we do is we teach women um, to bring awareness on every part of their life, teach them to see where the roadblocks are and then help them design the life that they want because you can't have a fulfilling life void of the deepest desires of your heart. I got to tell you, uh, we manifested one another, girl, you and I, (laughs) this is just, this is, I mean, what you're saying is everything. I think just, you have so much to offer women and um, what I'm thinking, I mean, I'm thinking a million things because in my book, it, I, I take apart every part of a human being, the same thing. So it's very, mm-hmm. we're very like, we're in line, we're in the same mission. <laughs> so it's like helping people to, and I always feel like, and we were discussing this because you're describing taking mm-hmm. women to see themselves in all these different parts of their life. And then because, but then in our off camera conversation, we were talking about the highest frequency, we heard that the highest frequency is authenticity, right? And that that's truth. So being able to see all parts of ourself, right? That's the pathway to freedom. Like we were discussing this before. So yeah, I feel yeah. like, aren't we, aren't we taught? I just did a, this. It was a silly video. It was like three minutes, but I did this video because I was feeling it. 
that we, we as women, tell me what you think of this. And then we'll, yeah. continue. we as women will like, actually, like we w- want to be seen. We want to be yeah. valued. We want attention, right? But we have labeled it. Society has labeled it. Like, I'm going to, you know, say it's kind of be abrupt, but it's like, we'll call people, I won't, but, you know, attention whore or like, yeah. you know, she's so needy or, and I was thinking about that today, that how women who are not in relationship to what you're saying, when we are not fulfilled, we look for ways to fulfill it in their dysfunction, okay. the way that we think okay. that we're like, I will try to fill it in the way that I think I'm v- of value. So if a woman okay. is being provocative, it's because that's where she thinks her value is. It's not that there's something wrong with her. She's just, and you know what I was thinking? And I know you are all over this. And then I'll stop talking because I want to hear you. Oh, I like you talk. <laughs> now I want to hear you speak. So. <laughs> you know what it is? The, I feel like when we there is this DNA, this is like unbelievable greatness inside of us, fearfully and wonderful made, this majesty that God made inside of everybody. And when we're not aligned with that, we're miserable. And we want other people to see it because we're it, they're supposed to see it because it's supposed to be alive. And we've yeah. lost, we've we've criticized one another for 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 showing any spark. And yeah. I feel like what you're doing is you're you're wanting women to see it. But if we see what's like what we perceive is like, okay, if I see my finances or if I see that, you know, I don't like myself, that then we beat ourselves up for that. Right. So tell us how you would walk someone through. I mean, I mean, I need this. Don't well, I think we, I, I like, need don't it. Don't you feel I, like you need this too? We, you I, need I this do. Too? I'm my own student. Yes. Yeah. Because we, we never, I don't think we ever arrived. We only evolved our higher self, but I want to touch on two points. Number one, we are in a culture where women are not taught to understand their unconditional value. You know, when we're born, our children, our parents might dote on us and say, oh, this is, you know, whatever we do, we spit up, right? And we are loved. And then and all of a sudden we're four or five years old and we hear our parents or maybe our mom say, oh, I'm so fat. Neurologically, all day long. Oh, so that's what makes me beautiful. And then we go to the grocery store and we see a sick, skinny figure. Neurologically, we go to the grocery store on a weekly basis with our mom. We're six or seven years old and we're like, beautiful, skinny. Okay, that's what beautiful. We've defined what makes a woman valuable subconsciously as a culture. You go to People's Magazine, outfit is 37%. She looks better than this, 89%, the same outfit, as though there's no woman behind that outfit. We have literally conditioned women to devalue parts of who we are. And so part of the crisis is that we were created to be valued, like you said, that majesty, that unique, irreplaceable human being that has a DNA like no water, that has trillions of cells, that is irreplaceable, unrepeatable. But the problem is we haven't been trained to see our value. So, so many of us are hurting because we were created to be valued. Now, when we don't know our value, what do we do? We compensate, like you said. Why? Because we were created for it. We were created to be admired. When I say that, women like, what are you talking about, January? <laughs> I just I mean, said this. Yeah. 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 Right. We were, we were, what does it mean to be admired? If I ask every woman and say, how would you feel if the person you love the most or people around you in your community say, ah, oh, I just admire you. Who you are changes me. That's admiration. Who doesn't want that? Every woman longs for it, but we don't even ask for it. We just want it. Somebody to hear us. You know, we're literally just asking for peanuts when we deserve a crown. So it begs a question. We live in a world that's, you know, women are conditioned to not see their value. So now we've got women who's compensating to be heard, to be seen. Look at me. Look at what I'm wearing. Look what I'm, you know. And why is that? Because they're hurting. Yes. Why? Because they deserve to be seen. They were created for it. Yes. And that's why we, the first thing we do 
before we even train women on mindset and skill set to design their life, is to rewire neurologically in their brain that their worth is unconditional. That the conditions placed on them going up, you're only good if you get an A. You're only good if you're skinny. You're only good if you prove that you are good at basketball. All these conditions placed by the people around us and the culture become our metric of what makes us valuable. So we have to rewire our, our brain. And we not we teach women to say, your worth never changes. My worth is unconditional. I'm unrepeatable and irreplaceable. My value is not for sale. That is the foundation of every decision we make in our life. So the first thing we do is rewire our unconditional worth. And then we get to begin to do the work. Because the foundation of knowing that our value never changes, changes the way we make decisions in our life. I don't have to prove anything to anyone. I can show up imperfectly. I can fail. I can totally mess up on Instagram. I can start a business and mess up and feel like, well, it's just, I'm just failed in my business. It doesn't change my value. I'm still valuable. Yes. And here's what I always say. Who's training us from a very young age to protect our value, to honor our value, and to rewire the fact that our value is unconditional? That's what where we need to begin with the young minds, with the teenagers, because what happens is a compounding ripple impact of now I'm stressed, I'm exhausted, and I don't like myself simply because it began with not understanding our value. I love that. Yes. What do you do next? So when you go through, if I don't know if I'm asking like too much, but no, do we do, what would you, if you went to each one of those um, parts of a woman, are you able to say like a sentence or something about each part, like what you would do with them? Yeah. Well, so much value here. Mm -hmm. Well, it goes back to every woman is different and every woman's desires are unique to them. And so you have to actually journey your own desires Mm -hmm. because it's so unique to each woman and it's so unique to each season. So the first thing we do is we go around, you know, we we have a a rating system and say zero to 10, your intimacy, zero to 10, your friendship, zero to 10. And we help them to kind of just see, oh, wow, I never even thought about that. I never even thought that my friendships actually were toxic. And then we help them see now, if your friendship are toxic, where is that impacting? I literally put an arrow where I, we show them that rating themselves, that where it's impacting their friendship, their marriage, their wealth, their ability to make money. And then we go into this um, exercise where we say, what do you want and don't want in every part of your life? Love that. I do that. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, and, 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 and then we teach them the distinction between dreaming and goal setting. And I think, you know, it gives them hope. Allison, that's what I see. Like for the first time, it's almost like, wow, somebody, I can pay attention to what I want. Like, I don't have to put up with that. You know, and even that process is healing for so many women because I'm sure you take, you know, so many people to go through that, but it's not a norm. You know, it's like, maybe you have, you know, you have to go, it's not in our education system. It's not in our conversation. And I think that's part of the problem is that, it's not normal for us to consider what we want and don't want and to constantly think about um, choosing our highest and best self because we're valuable. You know, um, I everything you're saying is so incredible. And I, I'm thinking about when you were talking about that we really want to be admired And it's such Mm -hmm. synchronicity here. Like it's so God, because I just did this video. It's so weird, but it's this concept I think about, and I see you and your husband, like I can see you admire Mm -hmm. one another. And, Mm -hmm. you know, I admired my late husband. When I would just look at him, I would feel those feelings of admiration. And I felt it from him. And I think we've lost that in our society that we can actually admire ourselves and it's not narcissism. Mm -hmm. It's not, you know, we can, not which, and we label all of these things as selfish or, you know, you think about a little, you know, I picture a little kid, I picture like a little girl dressing up and being like, Mm -hmm. I'm so beautiful. I'm so beautiful in the mirror. I, you know, I love myself so much. Like, isn't that delightful? Yes. And God delights in that. Yes. I picture you know? God going, you're so beautiful. I love you so much. And her saying, 
I love me so much too. And like him saying, I love you so much. And she, her, she's agreeing, I love me. Which isn't that beautiful? It's so beautiful, but why can women say that? It's almost like they feel inauthentic because they're so conditioned that what makes them beautiful and valuable is X, Y, and Z. So they can't say it to themselves. Yes. They can't see their own value. Yes. And, you know, when you don't see your own value, you do not have the capacity to see the value of the other. Yep. It is. True. That's really what hurts that I see, you know, as mothers in a relationship, you're in a relationship and it starts out great. And then you realize you know, I don't actually value myself. And then we project our pain to the people, you know, to our partners, to our friends, and it becomes a spiral, you know, and that's why I think you have to start with under, our value, understanding our value that, and it's so much of it, how we speak to ourselves in our school, we have hundreds of scripts, literally thousands of scripts, because we just don't know what to say. We don't know how to talk to ourselves, Allison. We don't. Okay. I need to be kind to myself. What does that sound like? Yes. What is that? You know, what are the words that we use, you know, so that it's, it's not narcissistic to say, I value who I am. Yes. I honor myself. Yes. I'm patient with my failure. You know, I can fail and learn from it. Like we need the scripts because the, you know, the things that we say, words become flesh. Yes. And so we need to give women words. And, you know, I feel like the culture is bound by words, language. Oh, I love and language. language. Mm -hmm. The language that we currently have right now are not, in some degree, are harmful, yes. not just for women, but for men. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, what we become what we mm -hmm. think about, but what we think about is based on language. So part of so much of what we do is we literally give women scripts for every part of their, what we call, arena. And that is a game changer because we could want to have boundaries, but we don't know how. Yes. to actually communicate boundaries because yes. we just don't have the words to. We could want to honor ourselves and say, yes, I should start honoring myself. I should start loving myself. I should start, you know, respecting who I am. But what does that sound like? And what are the words that we need to use to do that? Um, so I think that's a big part is that we we have no common language on how to actually honor our value. I am laughing because we are like the same person because I tell everyone <laughs> on this team, I'm like, would you please operationally define that word? Like, because, <laughs> because a word, like when you're saying, like, if you tell a woman, oh, you have to honor yourself. Like, what does that even mean? Yeah. Right. But it's almost like, and everything, the, the scripts that you're describing, you think about this for me has been a ongoing life experience of transformation, like turning a ship, what the yeah. little incremental, you know, choose peace instead, choose, you know, self-love. And they feel, they feel foreign. The Even the language that we understand what it means, it feels completely foreign because neurologically our reticular activating system is rejecting it. It's not letting it in, yeah. but what, yeah. what we practice, we get good at. And it's just like, I don't want people to give up. You know, do you find that? Yeah. Like, what would you say to a woman like today? Like, not even in your school. Like right now she's sitting here. She's like, you know yeah. what? I hate my husband. I hate the way I look. You know, yeah. I mean, how many I mean, women do you hear saying that? They have no, well, they don't like their life. They're bored. Mm -hmm. What would mm -hmm. you say? I would say that you have a choice right now to stay where you are or to invest in your life of fulfillment. We always have a choice. Um, I would say that is look at your two choices, you know, stay where I am or risk investing. What, so what does that look like? That's number one. Number two, find a role model of the woman that you want to become. And it could be three or four because role models shift the way we see what's possible. If you say, oh, I just don't like my marriage. I don't like myself. I don't. And oftentimes when we think of role model, um, we haven't been trained to look at women with eyes of harvest and admiration. We've been trained to compete and compare. So then we look at the great marriages, we're like, oh, mine awful, you know. But if we teach them how to actually model from other people, now instead of feeling this insecurity of comparison, they have an automatic language to say, oh, what can I learn from it? Yeah. What am I going to harvest from it? Everyone becomes a walking source of wisdom. Um, and number three, we have to invest in in the right people around us that are also investing in themselves. 
Because if you're around women who are talking about, I hate myself, I hate my marriage, it's only a matter of time until you're going to either walk out of that friendship or you're going to join that crowd. So who we surround ourselves is so critical. So those are the three components. And I just want to tell women there's so much hope. Like I was at the bottom of the barrel. We've had women who've wanted to commit suicide. We've had women who have on the verge of divorce. We've had women who've been depressed for 10 years. When they realize that it's possible for them to rewire their value, train themselves to invest in life fulfillment, miracles can happen. And so what I ask you is that wherever you are, um, let's celebrate that pain and let's say there's hope if I'm willing to take action to solution. I love that. You know, it's um, the, it's almost like this. We don't realize how much power we have within and how much, um, you know, one of the things I think people become afraid that they th- they think they have to jump in and start making all these changes, but all yes. of those mm-hmm. transformations begin internally in thought, feeling, uh, faith, and like those things incrementally transform and then you can just watch your outside world change like you don't have it doesn't have to be scary you can practice and fool around in your own mind and just learn how to become you know i love to ask myself questions like i have a book so I'll, so if i'm feeling badly i you know since i'm a therapist i ask myself you know <laughs> wise questions i have to say because i know that we have to cut short so i want to just say something about you I'm interrupting my own self. You are a wide <laughs> source of wisdom. You said that about, you know, that women should find that there's a wise source of wisdom around. And there, there, it is true, but you are a wise source of wisdom. And your use of language, I mean, I'm a, the language police. Everybody here would tell you that. Like, language is so powerful. And yeah. sound waves never end. They, tra- mm-hmm. they change things, you know? Oh, and... Um, oh they're powerful. And so, so are thought. And this is, you know, I know you've heard this probably a billion times. I don't know who's listening and who, ha- but I'm repeating it because we have to remember, you know, they say we have 90,000 about thoughts a day. How does anybody really know how many, but 90,000 thoughts a day. And of those thoughts, 91% of them are the same thoughts we thought yesterday. And as you're saying, we were programmed. You know, we, and from zero to seven, we're in a theta brainwave, which is a, a hypnotic state, which is God given because we have to learn all those wonderful things, walking, talking, connecting, all these things. But we collect peppered all along the way, all these other really not great things. So part <laughs> of our right, part of our obligation as a human being is this transformative process of taking what we've learned unlearning and learning again and creating our life we have power to create we're co-creators with god this is powerful and like why not have fun with it one of the things i'm learning tell me what you think of this and i know you have to go this is the last thing do we have time okay Okay. Yep, yep, yep. I'm all into like experimenting and creating my life. So I will just like, you know, ask myself questions and I'll start, ch- you know, changing my, th- my, my thought and what I'm looking at and focusing on where I'm supposed to go and aligning with myself. So along the way, I'm watching with fun, sometimes not when I get <laughs> something, something comes into my life that's aligned with these things that I'm creating, right? Yep. And then it's not everything, it, but then it's a lesson. Yeah. So I'm learning to enjoy this journey along the way. This, this, it's like a grow, instead of seeing it as, oh, this didn't work out, but I see five parts of it that I changed. I see the human beings that I attract in my life now are so yeah. different than who I attracted 20 years ago. It's because of, I'm creating more, I'm allowing myself to be me, which draws who I'm supposed to be aligned with, right? So what do you think about that? Like that process, like it's, it feels like you feel like you're being hurt along the way, but you're not, people are flying out of your life for different reasons. Things are changing because you're, you're, you're going on the path you're supposed to be on, right? To me, it's growth. What you're, what you're 
communicating is growth and sometimes growth hurts, you know, but, but I remember, you know, this one lady who's going through our, our course and she's like, January, I can't explain it. I feel like I'm getting pulled, from, like I'm getting like really challenged and pulled, but I feel alive, <laughs> like, yes. you know, but I, cause I think growth progress is an element of happiness. Like that's what actually makes us feel alive is that we're growing. There's a progression. So even though it's not exactly the way we want it, I think that's why I tell women invest in growing because even though it's not exactly, you know, but along the way, parts of you are getting transformed in a way that you'd never probably imagine. And it makes, it feels good. It gets that dopamine. Like, but also I will also say, Allison, that it's probably also your humility that allows you to do that. What I mean by that is you're experimenting and it doesn't go your way, but instead of you feeling like, oh, you know, it's your attitude of humility to say, well, I'm going to learn from it. I'm going to take the best things out of it. And that is the game. That is what I think the game changer is that you have the humility to be able to, in the midst of the divine adventure, pivot, take the good, put away the bad and start over again and not give up on you. Not because you're full of you, but because you have this beautiful gift within you that you were created. I mean, you were commissioned to give to the world. So you're just following that divine commission and it makes you feel alive. You're, you're aligned with it, even though, you know, it doesn't show you feel good at certain parts, but it does, you know, because you're in this divine adventure of becoming who you are created to be in every season of your life. And that is to me, fulfillment. It's not an arrival. Yes. It's a journey yes. of becoming who you were created to be in every part of your life. It's not about perfection. It's not about having it all. It's about becoming. That's what fulfills the woman, becoming who we're created to be. You know, um, what you're saying, um, I, can, I actually can feel God right now. Like I could feel like <laughs> surrounding me. And, you know, the thing that you're saying that hits me is that that's what you're doing. That's what I'm doing is we're just reminding women to remember that. Isn't that what you do? Like, I feel like we were discussing how much we need one another because, mm -hmm. you know, in, in what we're doing, like we, it gets lonely too, because like we need other women to encourage us and tell us, Hey, you know, you're, this is the reason this is happening, right? So you saying that to me, me, you know, me saying it's whatever, uh, you saying it to your women is just a reminder because we forget, yeah. right? Don't we? We, we forget we, we're on yeah. a mission for growing. <laughs> no, I almost think we forget, but also we don't have the skill to even ask the questions or we don't have the skill to see that we're in a journey, you know? So part of it is that we're, we're under trained, you know, like you and I can probably see this because in some degree we've invested in learning skill after skill and we never, you know, arrive. But I think there's a deprivation of learning how to think, a deprivation of the skill that we need to build to actually come to a point where we're like, I'm free to fail. I know I'm growing. Um, yes. I know I'm becoming to even get to that point where you are in harmony and alignment with who you're created to be requires so much training. And that's why we need training. Yes. You know, we need boundaries, we need awareness. We need to ask the right question. We need to learn a pivot. We need to learn, you know, to fail. I mean, these are skills that we need to learn so that we can actually align ourselves because the deprivation of those skills that are the untrained woman lives a hard life. Why? Because she's incapable of actually fulfilling who she was created to be. Not because she doesn't want to, but because she doesn't know how to. Oh, I love that. The and how many women woman lives a hard life. Wow. It's true. Yes. So it's listen, so true. It's I true. I want to respect your time, but I want to suck everything out of that brain Thank of yours you. right now. <laughs> no. What I said Thank when you, you were going to up on the stage, as I said, just share your heart. And that yes. is all the gold is right there in you. Held my hand. I remember yeah. he gave me this beautiful, um, tender look. And I carried that with me. So thank you. And you were, you were, a, you were amazing, like powerhouse. <laughs> speaker. So now I just, I wonder if you'd ever come on again. Would you ever come on? Of here? course. I would love it. I love our conversation. It's rich. I'm grateful. Um, this is, you know, this is my life's, my heart's 
um, deepest desire is to share this mission for people to be fulfilled. It's not just women. We all need to to feel fulfilled. And what that means is that we feel alive. Yes. Women today have life with no life within. And yet we're giving so much life to the people around us. It's called depletion. It is an injustice to women. So then we wake up where we hate ourselves. We hate our life. It's regret. It's resentment. And we need to get to the root of it. And it's because women were not trained to design a life that fulfills them, but yet they are still giving. That's how beautiful we are. Yes. Giving yes. even though we're not receiving. So that's our mission is to, to train women with the mindset and skills that they need to design a fulfilling life so that they can give more of who they are to the world. Yes. I've I've felt all of those feelings for sure. <laughs> Well, and thank you, Sam. So thing that you um, just said, so beautiful. So beautiful. <laughs> let me, let well, me I'm going to be back. I'd love to, and we're going to see each other hopefully yes. oh, soon. No matter what, we're seeing one another. So listen, I'm coming right to your name. I'm go- knocking on your door. But anyhow, yes. I'm just kidding. I'm not going to do that. No, you're not. You can. <laughs> this one from Filipino. Everybody's welcome. I'll make well, you. There food. you go. <laughs> that is good. So oh. let me. So where can where everything's going to be in the show notes. Everything about you, where people can people can find you, but what's the best place that they can find you? Follow us on Instagram. That's our best place for now that we, um, you can follow me. And uh, if you, we have our book on Amazon as well. If you want to, um, it's called Redefine Success for Women, a proven blueprint to de- design a fulfilling life. It's a blueprint and it's step-by-step. So I think that's going to be your how-to. So That's amazing. All right. So it is a wrap. Thank you, my love bucket. Thank you. Guys, thank you so much for listening to the show. I just want to say to you that we are all together a part of the mission, Mission Awake, a mission that's going to stop the mediocrity that's plaguing all of us. So if you got something here today, I ask that you would be a part of this mission and you'd share it with whoever you can. Take a screenshot of the show and share it on your Instagram. If you are looking for me, you can find me on social media platform, Instagram, Allison Answers or Lager Counseling Services. And give us a, a review and subscribe, if you could, to YouTube, Allison Answers. That's where you're going to get a lot of content. I drop stuff every day, goofy stuff, all different kinds of stuff, five-minute videos that just get you moving in your day. Have a great week. See you next time. <laughs>